Okay, good day. This is Math 140 College Algebra. I'm Professor McCulley. This is lesson number 1.1, the Cartesian plane, distance, and midpoint. So this is our first lesson, and um, as I probably explained during class, the good, uh, a good first idea is to uh, print off the notes from the slides. Those are available to you either on Moodle or on uh, a shared Google Drive. I would suggest if you don't have those printed off, print them off and then you can make a book out of them and then as we go through these lessons you can add whatever notes you need to the slides and that way you're not writing down every single thing. Also if you are not a big user of the graphing calculator, the TI-84, which is what I will be using for this course, um, make sure that you have yours and there is a additional supplementary video on using the TI-84 that you might want to watch before this to help you learn that piece of equipment a little bit better. But other than that, let's get right to it. So today's uh, learning goals are going to be, we're going to plot some points in the Cartesian plane. We're going to use the distance and midpoint formulas, and we're going to use the coordinate plane to model some problems. So some definitions here first. Here is the coordinate, uh, the Cartesian plane. It has two perpendicular axes. We usually call the horizontal axis the x-axis and the vertical axis the y-axis. The an ordered pair is a collection of two coordinates that marks positions along both the x and y axis. So, some examples here of points on the coordinate plane: two, four. Uh, the first value is the x value, so we'll come over here to 2. And then the second value is the y value, so we'll come up here to 4. And we will mark this point right here as 2, 4. The next one is 3, negative 2. So we come over to here to 3 along the x-axis. We come down to here on negative 2 along the y-axis. And we label it 3, negative 2. And then 0, 4. 0, 4 is a special point because it lies on the y-axis. It is at 0. We stay at 0, but we come up to 4 here. Since it is on the y-axis, we need not label that. And then negative 3, negative 2. We come back negative 1, 2, 3. And we go down to negative 2. So right here is negative 3, negative 2. The distance formula, is the formula, uh, excuse me, the distance between two points on the Cartesian plane can be found using their coordinates and the following formula. D is equal to the square root of the difference between the x coordinates squared plus the difference of the y coordinates also squared. So let's talk about an example of how to do that. So here are two points. We're going to label this point x1 comma y1 and we're going to label this point right here x2 comma y2. We're going to bring out our distance formula d equaling to the square root. That's not a very good square root. Let's do a better job. The square root, that's a little bit better, not much, but we'll live with it. x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. And we'll go square root of, so let's see here, my x2 is negative 3 minus 2 quantity squared plus the y2 is 5 minus 4 quantity squared. Simplify that just a little bit. So I get uh, negative 5 squared. Negative 5 squared is 25. And I get 1 here. 1 squared is 1. So I get the square root of 26. And the factors of 26 are 1. Uh, let's see here, 2, 13, and 26, none of which are perfect squares, so we're going to leave that as our most reduced answer. Moving on to the next one, the midpoint formula. The midpoint of a segment with endpoints x1, uh, y1, and x2, y2 is defined by this equation where m is the midpoint. Um, it's just the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So let's do an example of that. Find the midpoint of a segment with endpoints 2, 4 and 3, negative 3, 5. So my midpoint m is going to, if we recall, it's going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2 comma y1 plus 
y2 divided by 2. And again, this point right here we'll call x1 comma y1, and this point right here x2 comma y2. And so let's see here. Um, the x's are 2 plus, and uh, let's say negative 3, all over 2. And then the y's were 4 plus 5, all over 2. And so 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 over 2 is 1 over 2. And then uh, 4 plus 5 over 2 is 9 over 2. Now, I know that this one is an improper fraction, but it is a reduced fraction. I can't reduce this fraction any further, so we can leave it like that in this course. And I will accept those. Let's move on to the next one. Transforming some points, uh, just some reflections here. Uh, reflection or symmetry about the x-axis means for every point x comma y, we will also have the point x comma uh, negative y. If we have a reflection or a symmetry about the y-axis, for every point x, y that we have, we will also have the point negative x, positive y. If we have symmetry about the origin, any point x, comma, y, we will also have the point uh, negative x, comma, negative y. So let's take a couple points here, and we'll just make a quick little table of values. x, y, we'll do three points here. Let's do... Um, Oh, let's do 2, 2, let's do 0, 3, and let's do negative 3, uh, 4. So if we wanted to take those points, and I have a table of values, so let's put that point, we'll put one point right there. 0, 3 would be this point right here. And then this point here, negative 3, uh, negative 3, 4 would be this point right here. And we can label those, but I have a, uh, a table of values. So if I wanted to reflect in the y-axis, I would have a set of new points. And let, let me move this down just a little bit here. If I want to reflect in the y-axis, then... I would have a new set of points. We'll do those in red. Let's get a little bit smaller line there. So we too big. We'll call them X and we'll call them Y. And if we go back to this table here for reflecting about the, what did I say first? Oh, I want to do the Y axis first. Well, the Y axis is this second one. I probably should have done the x first, but that's okay. y-axis means that for every point x, y reflected about the y-axis, the new points will be um, negative x, positive y. So let's see here. If uh, the y stays positive but the x changes, this will, the new reflected point will be 2 uh, or negative 2, 2. 0 um, stays 0 because the 0 is neither positive or negative so it's still going to be 0 3 and then negative 3 4 it was negative to begin with so it becomes positive and gives me 3 4 so my reflected points there would be a point right here that point stays the same and then this point comes over there all right let me get rid of those and let's say we want to reflect in the x-axis. Let's do it like this. In the x-axis. Let's use green this time. X, Y. And so if we want to reflect in the x-axis for every point x, y, we're going to have a new point x, negative y. And so the x's stay the same, so I'll go 2. And this change, it becomes negative 2. 0, negative 3. Well, this time we're changing the y values, so we'll have negative 3 there. And negative 3, 4. Since the x value does not change, it stays the same, and we have negative 3, 4. So reflecting about the x-axis means that we'll be reflecting down here. We'll reflect down there. And then we'll also reflect down there. Those are the 
and you can see the distance from uh, the x-axis to this first point is the same as the distance from the x-axis to the reflected point. It's just flipped over that x-axis. So let's get rid of those. Let's erase this. Let's do a better job. There we go. And let's change this to the origin. And if we go back, a reflection about the origin means that for every point x, y, our new point will be negative x, negative y. So let's pick another color. Let's pick blue. And so we're going to change our new point. This point, and, and when you're reflecting about the origin, you're going negative. You're flick, excuse me. You're changing the sign of both the x and the y value. So negative two, negative two. Zero again is neither positive or negative, but we do have to change the y. And this negative 3 changes to positive 3, and this positive 4 changes to a negative 4. So our new points reflected in the origin, we have negative 2, negative 2. We have 0, negative 3, and we have the point 3, negative 4. And those are our reflected points about the origin. Oh, that's all I have for today, this first lesson here. I hope it wasn't too hard. Um, if you thought it was real easy, please don't uh, think that that's going to be the content of the course. It does get a little bit more challenging as we move forward. But as we finish up, we will talk about our Marvel fun fact of the day. Joe and Anthony Russo known at, were known as comedy directors before they were tapped to direct The Winter Soldier. The biggest thing that they had directed before the MCU was the sitcom community, and they went on to direct not only um, The Winter Soldier, but also The Avengers, Infinity War, and Endgame. That's all I got for today, folks. Have a good day. Goodbye.